T-minus 15 seconds. Guidance is internal. 12, 11, 10, 9. Ignition sequence start. 6. Tell me a little bit about Grandpa. Just sort of his life. Sure. I um, met Alec when I was um, home for the summer, the summer of 1970. He um, wanted to be introduced to me, so he got a friend to introduce us. So at any rate, um, we met, and then he asked me out uh, that same particular evening, and I said, I'm sorry, I can't go out with you tonight. I'm going out with my brothers. So what he did is he followed us around all night. <laughs> so he never quite got over that he asked me out for a date because I think he asked out a lot of girls and I don't think anybody else ever said no. Tell us a little bit about Grandpa and Uncle Ann, just sort of what comes to mind, just real chill. Yeah, um, well, your grandpa, my dad, and your uncle and my brother uh, were two of the toughest guys I've ever known. Um, my dad, your grandpa, grew up in Butte, Montana at the end of the Great Depression and was raised pretty much by a single mother, my grandma Lucy. His, his dad died when he was only four years old and so, um, you know, they had kind of a hard scrabble. And your uncle Eamon, um, you know, he was my little brother um, even after he got to be six feet two and towered over me. I always called him my baby bro. Um, there's just, you cannot deny the existence of God when you hear their story. We, we all were really really sad when Eamon's health just completely collapsed. He lost the ability to walk when you were just a little boy. I don't think you have any memories of him when he was on his feet. So we had lived with your uncle's illness for a really long time. Um, your grandpa, on the other hand, was, was real, you know, healthy um, up until the end and when he was 79, right before his 80th birthday, he got pretty sick and uh, went to the hospital and was diagnosed with congestive heart failure and COPD, uh, a lung disease. They discharged him from the hospital and put him immediately on hospice care. Uh, and so he was home on hospice and in home health care and your uncle was also in the home in your grandma's home uh, also receiving in home health care your grandpa was really tough and he was really stubborn and uh so instead of hanging on for a couple of months he he stayed with us for 14 months and so by the time your grandfather passed away i had said goodbye to him eight times you know, it was good that we had the extra time with him. A lot of people don't get that. To have a, a brother who had been so sick and, and having to watch him suffer for all those years, for 17 years, and then to have my dad also be so sick and to suffer for an extended period of time. And, and so those 14 months that your grandpa lay dying uh, were definitely the hardest 14 months of my life. We had a wonderful Easter. Lucy brought up a beautiful dinner for Easter, and it was also Eamon's birthday. So we, we all had dinner, you know, Eamon in his bed and Allie in his bed, and the rest of us at the dining table. But the next morning, Eamon was fine when he first woke up and seemed fine. And then he started to fade. And um, so Eamon went to the hospital then on um, Monday, 
the 18th, his birthday was the 17th, and by Friday, the doctor was very, very worried about him and said, I, I don't think he's going to make it. And during this week, Alec just always, it just all got inside of him. Every time he even had to go to the hospital, my, my um, cell rang and I picked it up and the doctor said, Eamon is really doing poorly, so you need to get right up to the hospital. That Saturday, I said, Alec, I've, I've got to go. I think he was conscious. I wouldn't say he was unconscious at all. I got up to the hospital, I think by about 9.30, and Eamon just, um, he wasn't unconscious, I know, and he did talk a little bit off and on. And so I said, well, Eamon, I'm really worried about Dad, so I'm going home. And so when I got home, Alex seemed like he was breathing a little bit um, faster, but he wasn't at all distressed. And it was such a relief because the nurses had told me that he, um, he had been really afraid of dying earlier, for, you know, from the start. And so, um, and so um, I had prayed and prayed they would have a very peaceable death. And so anyway, Alec did pass extremely. He was so gentle. And then I got up to the hospital, and so I got up there at about, I don't know, three or something, I guess. And Eamon was just still about the same, so. Eight, I was in Florida when your grandpa died, and uh, your grandma called me to tell me the news, and uh, it was really hard. Then, less than nine hours later, on April 24th, uh, your uncle died. So they died in the same day. It was about um, 10, 15 then, and, and, and Eamon passed. And as he passed, their tears just streamed down his face. <laughs> My sister was there. She had loved him so much. She didn't have a son. So he was like her son. Yeah, I'll never forget getting that second call from your grandma. And... I could tell the minute she called me what had happened. Um, she was absolutely broken and um, her voice will just, oh, I will never forget uh, what it sounded like uh, and what she said. And I just started screaming, no, 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 no. <laughs> and when we drove out, Oh, I looked to my to my right, and I saw a fox in the in these shrubs, and I just couldn't believe seeing it. And I asked my sister, but she hadn't noticed it. And then I read that when people are crossing over, they'll often see a fox. A fox will be seen after they've crossed over, and so I'm I'm hoping I'm hoping there. I hope they're both just telling a lot of stories and laughing, and, and I hope Eamon can walk. After getting that news, you know, just closing my eyes for a second to try to take it all in, and this vision came to my mind of these twin missiles just, uh, just blasting off and piercing outer space, and uh, it's an image that sticks with me anytime I think of those two men and the way that they departed the earth. Um, it, when I feel their presence the most is when I'm doing something that brings me a lot of joy. Laughing with you, laughing with Elsie. Um, suddenly I just feel this extra warmth and I know they're with us.